Today let's talk about Actively Learn, which is a program that when used purposefully can make text you use in your class more accessible, more engaging, and also provide feedback all in the same program. In today's screencast, I'm going to flip between teacher view and student view so you can see what both look like. So let's start out as a teacher. As a teacher, I'll start by going to ActivelyLearn.com and I want to join as a teacher. Now because we have our Google Apps for Education accounts, the nice thing about Actively Learn is I can sign up using my Google account, my My Panthers Google account. However, because I already have an account, I'm going to go straight to sign in. All right, this is what it looks like when I'm signed into Actively Learn. You'll notice I already created two classes, first hour and second hour. As a teacher, it helps the most if you can create a separate class for each of your um, classes that you teach. I would go down here if I wanted to add more classes. The second important feature of Actively Learn as a teacher is my workspace. My workspace is where I'm going to upload texts or um, create text that I want my students to read in their class. So let's go ahead and click Add Text so you can see the type of text that you can do. Um, you can do Add from Directory, which is actually a list of public domain texts. So let's say I'm already reading Romeo and Juliet. I can go ahead and just click that one right away. I don't actually have to find it online and add it. The other option I have in Workspace is to add a text from an online text. Uh, the upload text is actually a premium feature. I would have to pay to be able to do that. All right, so let's take a look and see what it looks like when I try to do an Add Online Text. It's going to ask for a URL. So what I did is I already found this article from Time for Kids about super smog in China. If I copy that link and go back to Actively Learn, I can type that in there. I can also add the title and add the source. Filling out these lower pieces is completely optional, but the kids will be able to see that. When I'm finished, I can scroll down and click Add Text. All right, so as you can see, I did add that text to my workspace. Now what I can do is I can actually um, manipulate that text and add all kinds of features to it to make it more engaging um, and more accessible to the kids. The way I'll do that is by clicking on the text. And once it opens, you'll notice there are several features that I can add to this text um, to make it really interactive for the kids. One feature I can add to the text is a link. So let's say I'm not sure my kids know what northern China looks like. If I highlight that, I can insert a link. I found this link of a picture of northern China. So let's just go ahead and copy that right in, save, and we're done. Another thing I can add to my text is an actual note to the kids. So maybe I want to define something for them. Maybe I just want to write something in there that I want them to think about. But the way I would do that is I would also highlight. So let's say I'm not sure that my kids really understand what the World Health Organization is. I'll highlight that and I'm going to do an insert note. Now all I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy the link from about the World Health Organization. If I were truly doing this, I would probably make that a little more kid friendly. But for time's sake, let's just go ahead and add it. Actively Learning also allows you to incorporate categories, color-coded categories. So when a kid sees pink, for example, let's call this one informational. They're going to know that the pink cues are always informational notes for them they can take a look at. It also can add media. So let's say I wanted to include this YouTube video about the World Health and Organization. I can go ahead and link that as well. There's a list here of all the types of images and videos that you can incorporate. But think about that. Not, not only are the kids getting a definition of what the World Health Organization is, you could also include pictures or a video to describe it so the kids really understand and can build that background knowledge. So as you can see, I've now inserted my note and the video. Last but not least, uh, Actively Learn allows you to incorporate quizzes and questions. So let's say at the very end of the text, following a paragraph about Beijing, I could insert a question and these two top parts are totally optional. I have the option to do short answer or multiple choice. So let's do a multiple choice question about Beijing. My question could be, which of the following are true about Beijing? If I scroll down, I can add my choices. And based off of the text, I know the kids learn that um, it is the capital of China. They also learn that um, they are using a color-coded system to indicate pollution. Um, and if I wanted to add another choice, my final choice will be all of the above. That is actually the correct answer. So what I would want to do along the left here is just select that as the correct answer. If I scroll down further, you'll notice I also have the option on questions to add media. So I could add a picture to my question, I could add a video to my question, and have the kids answer based on that as well. I'm just going to go with this for now though, and go ahead and click Done. 
Now if you notice, this inserted the question, down below it also gives you the option for kids to be able to rate the helpfulness of that question. I can also add open-ended or short answer questions. So for example, in this piece, a, a Chinese man is talking about, or excuse me, woman is talking about her experiences when she saw all this pollution. So maybe I add a question there that says something like, so this one's short answer, um, how would you feel if you saw pollution as thick as snow. And then again, I can also add media if I want to. If not, I can just go ahead and click done. Now, when I'm done setting up a text, I can go ahead and click back, click on my classes, and actually assign this text to them. I would do that by clicking on classes, and if I want to assign this to say first hour, for example, I'll click on first hour, I'll click add an assignment, and, I'll sh and that will show up and now it's in first hour as an assignment. So now as a teacher, how do I get my kids into my class and being able to read this article and answer the questions and see the text? I would do that by clicking on add students. Now I'm going to have a class code that I want to give my students so that they can sign up automatically. I don't need to input students, I just give them the code, they enter it, and they're already added to my class. Now each class is going to have an individual code so the kid will go into the correct hour. All right, we switched our view a little bit. I actually brought my iPad up onto the screen, so now you can see what it looks like as a student joining a class and reading the text. As a student, I'll first click Join as a Student. And just like with teachers, I have the options to use my my Panthers account or my Google Apps for Education account to sign up so I don't have to put in my name or anything like that. All right, so I signed up with my Google account. Now as a student, I'm going to click in the bottom left-hand corner, Join Class. This is where I'm going to put in that input code my teacher gives me to go into the correct hour. All right, I put in the input code for first hour, so I'm going to go ahead and click join, and now I'll be a part of that class. And there it is, my first hour class. So now I can click on that, and I'm going to see the assignments that my teacher has given me. First of all, I've got my Super Smog in China reading. It's going to open up, and I'll be able to see all the little notes and quizzes that my teacher added. All right, so here we go. I'm going to notice that Northern China is underlined, and when I click on it, I'll see that I can go to the link to get the picture of Northern China. I also notice that the World Health Organization is highlighted. When I click on it, it'll bring up that description that I wrote, and it'll also bring up the video that the teacher attached. As I keep scrolling, I get to that first question, and if I click on it, I can answer that question. So I'm not going to actually answer it for you know, time's sake, I'll just go ahead and put something in there. The great thing about signing up with Google Apps for Education is it automatically has my name ta attached to that. So you're never going to have a kid submit an answer and they actually forgot to add their name. It's already attached to their Google Apps account. And last but not least, I scrolled all the way to the bottom and I see that final question about Beijing. I'll read it as a student, select my answer, submit it, and we're done. Now you'll notice once it's submitted, it told me that I was correct automatically. So I'm getting instant feedback as a student. I can't go back and change my answer. That's one downfall, depending on how you want to use this. But that is the way that Actively Learn works. I get immediate feedback on whether or not I got it right. And if I got it wrong, it's going to tell me what the correct answer was. All right, we're back in teacher mode now because I'd like to show you what it looks like as a teacher when I want to go in and see my students' responses to questions. For the purpose of seeing this, I actually went back with a dummy count and answered the questions again. So now we've got two student responses. and You can see what that looks like. So let's go into first hour and let's go into the assignment that we'd like to correct. Now when I scroll down, I'm going to see the questions that students have answered so that I can click on them and give feedback. Now in this first one, it's open-ended. It says two out of two graded because I actually went in and added some grades um, previously, but if you hadn't graded them yet, because this is open-ended, it's going to say zero out of two. Let's click on that to be able to grade, and there's two things you can grade students on with short answers. You can give them a number between zero and four, and you can also give them a comment. Now, as a teacher, I would give them very descriptive comments, but because this is just an example, I wrote in, nice job. Um, you know, looks great, that kind of thing. I can also auto-grade any unanswered questions, um, but this is what it looks like from the teacher view to be able to grade those short answer questions. Now, let's go back and see what it looks like for multiple choice. If I scroll to the bottom, these auto-grade because you already selected the correct answer. So you don't have to go in and grade them individually, but if I do want to see who answered what, I can click on that and I can see, you know, Elizabeth answered all of the above. She got it correct, but WMS student answered it incorrectly. This is what they put. Finally, for feedback purposes, one of the really great things about this is I can click on these buttons up here as a teacher and I can look at performance data overall. 
So if I select the assignment of super smog in China and I just go to the questions, I'm going to get a nice overall view, color coded, of how my students are doing. If they got it wrong or if they got a zero, it's going to be in red all the way up to four, which is green. So I can really get a snapshot quickly of what my students are struggling with, who needs reteaching, who's ready to go. It's a nice tool as a formative assessment feedback. Um, the only thing that doesn't work unless you're in a pre premium paid account is the ability to export those um, scores, but these scores will be maintained within that reading forever so you can go back to them as you need to. All right, so that's just some basic information about using Actively Learn. There are other pieces to this program that are um, we didn't quite cover today, but that's the basics to get you going, and it's a really great tool to make text more accessible, to make it a little more engaging, and also to give you some feedback as a teacher on how your students are understanding the text and engaging with the text as a student.